Hi guys, my name is Pete K. I'm a progressive house producer from Portugal and actually living in uh, France, Paris. I've been producing for a couple of years now and I've been invited to do this project well through. Thank you to Leo for inviting me and I'm going to show you a remix uh, that I've made that I've just released. Uh, out on Greenstone, it's a release for um, it's a remix for Rollo Green track Raven. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoy. I'm gonna play the track just a little bit for you guys to hear. Right, so I've just uh, showed you, I think, the most interesting parts of the track. You can go and listen to the, to the rest after. Let's maybe speak about the arrangement first. So uh, I really wanted to, um, uh, when it goes to arrangement, I always put all the elements, uh, as soon as I have like a solid idea with all the elements that I think I need, I'll just put, put them like on, in the project for like three, four minutes and uh, start playing around, uh, taking some parts out, uh, some parts in, uh, taking the bass, the bass out and the kick out again uh, and putting it in and just basically having fun and trying to see what can uh, work here. On this one, in the first part for the intro, um, I tried to make it really simple in the beginning with no, not much stuff going on, just some, uh, some percussion. And then I slowly bring uh, melodic elements in, and I have this uh, drone bass coming in, always playing the same note. And um, yeah, I think it really adds some tension to it. And then all the rest. I really enjoy doing this kind of drops where you just keep on building stuff 
uh, lots of elements in and then just take them out and you have this big A and B effect where you just have your the kick and the bass in your face and it really works well in the club and I'm all about doing clubby stuff. So yeah, then I have this part here where the track starts developing and keeps on uh, adding some melodic, more melodic elements like these chords here. And then you get this little mini uh, breakdown uh, where I really wanted to like trick the crowd a bit when playing this in the in the dance floor, trick it to think it's gonna be going to a breakdown or something, and then just gets back to the simple drop just with a percussion and some other elements that were before, and this really works every time in the club, and uh, it's just fun, you know, to. <laughs> to do some different kind of arrangements, not, not really following a formula where you just like drop, breakdown, drop, breakdown. I, I would say it's really important to, to play a lot with, with the arrangements. I think the arrangement can really destroy or make a track. So um, I focus a lot on that and waste a lot of time working on my structures. Then we get we get the breakdown where I add the chords again because I, I left some this part here I, I have them playing just like the notes don't change so they, they just stay the same so we get that something new is happening and then I just take them out and take the other melodic elements out so I can get them in again in the breakdown um, so the the listener won't be bored and won't be uh, tired of hearing the same melody again and again um, so they get and then simply going to the build up where I just add these elements from the original track they were a bit cut and they and they just add like a, an extra layer to the to the to my plug So yeah, basically I would consider this track has three drops where one is just like simple kick bass, no percussions at all. And then the other one with a few more percussions and new elements. Um, and then the last one going like a bit more full uh, with this uh, synth that goes here. So yeah, maybe uh, let's try and then talk about the low end now. The low end, um, it consists of multiple bass layers. I like to build different rhythms, different grooves with different layers. So this is the, the main uh, drop bass, bass line. So yeah, pretty much a uh, long bass drop. Um, I've used Serum for the bass. For all the basses, uh, at the moment I'm using Serum. I'm actually using uh, a lot of presets <laughs> from Abstract Music Lab. Uh, it's a pack that, that uh, this one, Worldwide, and the Dark Knight as well. As well. Um, so Leo, Leo sent me those and it's just it just sounds like really really great already so i i love having this kind of presets where it just like sounds really good you don't need to do too much processing for me the mixing parts 
is the most boring part about music production. So, and I don't have much time to uh, to to work on that as well. So I like to have fun and just if it sounds good, it sounds good. What it counts is what you can make with it. So yeah, mostly presets with this one. Sometimes I can just build my own presets and save them and use them for uh, uh, for the other tracks. But for this one, I really went hard on the presets by Leo. So yeah, pretty basic this one. Just like saw wave, simple with some processing here as well uh, on the synths. And then uh, yeah, since it's since it sounds so good already, doesn't need much more here. So I just have like some simple. EQ here to boost a little bit more the low end as I wanted some some frequencies that I wanted to to pop out more and also cutting a little more of the the high high end because you don't really need it in the bass lines so I just try to cut it as much as I can here this is just a filter for automations and stuff and then like sidechain yeah so the other layers you have this one just this, then this one, a bit more subby, and then this one. This one is more a bit more acid, more mid bass sounds, and the other ones uh, just adds. This one is more, is, is doing the sub, and this one is just adding like a different character in more. I would say more attack, more punch to it. Just add something really good. And they all sound together. They sound like this. Uh, so yeah, usually I like to put it, and I would advise to put it like in different channels. For this one, I just use the same processing for for all three. But yeah, usually you wanna you wanna have your own uh, processing channel for each. Also, you can do that here, which in the in the EQ here as well, if you want to. But um, so yeah, that's pretty much about the low end here. I think uh, the kick. There's some uh, EQ on the kick as well. Yeah, So yeah, the kick, uh, it's basically something that I used in uh, in other tracks of myself and I just keep recycling my kicks and when they sound good, you just, I can just like use the same kick in other tracks. It works. It saves me time. So yeah, just giving it a bit more, a more, more like high end here. Without it. With it. Uh, and a tiny bit on the low ends. So, oh, then we got this. Uh, yeah, so still low end. I, I still got this little effect here. So this one is really, really nasty. Yeah, it comes from Serum as well. Yeah, there you go. Serum as well. I can't really say much about it. It's just like really just some synth, wa some uh, saw waves. A simple saw waves. What what I think really makes the difference of this one is the processing here. There's this plugin called Destructor, which comes with the uh, Fruity Loops, um, and it just makes all the difference. This is without. This is with. So yeah, just just uh, destroys completely the sound. It just gives like a lot of distortion. You can add multiple stuff here: distortion filter, chorus. Uh, speaker effects, which really like destroys the the synth. Uh, so yeah, just mess around with it. Bits EQ, cutting a bit the lows, and adding some more mid highs, and uh, adding a reverb as well. Also, a tiny automation with the side chain. So it gets like ducts out when the kick is in and it just like leaves the tail of the reverb uh, when uh, when the track keeps going. You can see it here. You can also have this layer 
which can be interesting to show. Uh, then, uh, yeah, once again, just like I just liked how the presets worked. Uh, what? Yeah, just proper. I just started, and uh, it just. It just worked well within the track, so I just like need the like uh, really simple notes just to add just to add a bit more interest, more detail to the track to keep the listener interest in your track. I always see this as from the point of view of the listener who's on the dance floor. So if I'm on the dance floor listening to this track, I really want to have fun and I want to listen to the track and keep having this uh, motivation uh not motivation but like something like to groove to to dance to uh, i want to keep dancing want to have fun so yeah just this sometimes some some little details like this can make the difference then you have this in here the, the, the last drop you have like uh oh, which one is this one maybe yeah just one more sound, one more layer, because why not? It just adds to the to the other one. Okay, right. So we can go to the synths now. Maybe pretty simple chords. I had to export it once again. Much interest, I think, on showing this. But yeah, just chords and playing around with the. This one I used Repro Repro Five basically. Just. Again, simple oscillators, wave, uh, saw wave, I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, just basically messing around and and uh, they, they are a bit different. They are not always the same. So just, just change a bit here uh, through the breakdown mostly. Uh, I can show you also my plug, which is actually Repro 5 again. Really like using, yeah, this one. As you can see, it's called Velvet. Uh, and the first time I described this track, this uh, synth, I've made Velvet, my track Velvet with it. And since I've been recycling this, this synth for some other tracks to try and have my kind of my signature pluck, I think that's really important as well to try and find some sounds that you really enjoy putting your sound in your tracks and uh, keep using them, get very creative with them as well. Uh, not using this always the same way, and uh, eventually it will you'll have your own sound. So I've used uh, the Valala, Valala. I don't know how you say it, but it just sounds great. It's without it, without the delay. Sounds like really bad without the delay and the reverbs. Also keeping it quite clear here with the EQ. With this one, I uh, with the high cut, I just like automate it after to open it a bit more. But uh, yeah, it's really important to clean as much as you can. Keep it simple. And if you don't know what to do, if you don't, just this is like the very most basic stuff you can do mixing wise. So yeah, what else? What else? What else? What else? Yeah, what I did with the original synths as well the original synths from the yeah from the original track this is the original string i've doubled it up and pitched it down to like one octave down and it sounds like this and together just sounds more full you know so i just I, I always do that when going to remixes. I really have fun doing remixes and uh, pitching down uh, the original elements, uh, seeing how it sounds and just having fun and playing around with them. I did the same with this uh, synth here. Uh, so basically there's the original synths. Sounded like this. And then I've put it in this groove, like here. And then just added the, 
a new one as well with minus 700 cents on the pitch. And yeah, and together it just sounds like this. Which it's one of the main scenes as well of the song, I think. Then, uh, yeah, I have the main ARP as well from the original, which actually, wait, let me show you something. The original song, the original ARP was in this pitch. And I just made it like more 500 cents to make it work with, uh, with my chords. Yeah, pretty basic. But you want to make sure you, you stay in key. <laughs> So yeah, also there's a bit more sounds from the original that I used here. I just basically cut down the first part because it was supposed to go like this. And I just used the, the, the second part. Yeah, because the first one was not working well with the with the chords I'm using as well, so it just made sense. Uh, what I really like as well in this leads from the original, it just like complements my plug so well. Just add something. It's just just not the same without them uh, because there's some different notes there so it really adds to the to the harmony of the melodies okay right i think it's time maybe to go to the vocal parts like i really had a lot of fun with this um i've discovered uh recently okay when i say recently it was about like last year uh but i started uh, using it a lot in my my most recent projects it's uh, a plugin from Fruity Loops, uh, which is old. It's called Granulizer, Fruity Granulizer. So I just use it to destroy the vocal. So to show you, basically the, the vocal, the original vocal is this one. I just uh, drag and drop it in the plugin, and then I just have fun with it. Uh, I just literally have fun with the knobs and uh, I don't know, I just start recording like multiple parts like uh, for 10 minutes or something or 15 minutes. I just do like tons of versions while playing the, tra the track in the project and just have fun with it and see how it sounds and what else I can use. I'm going to show you a little bit of how the knobs work here. Yeah, sorry. I <laughs> just um it's just like really easy to to have fun with it and uh, yeah, use it in your track. Also this added with uh, yeah, reverb, delays again, tons of EQ as well. Uh yeah, so this is like one of the tricks that I find the most interesting in this project as well. Nothing crazy on the effects, just like white noise samples uh, that I've used. Uh I can just use it in other tracks. Uh, it just sounds really good. Also using this riser from the original. So yeah, uh, percussion wise, uh, nothing too fancy, but I've used a couple of elements from the original, like this 16 adds were working already really good. Also used a couple of samples that I used before in other tracks. Cut down like chop, chopped samples from loops. Um, all together sounds like this. Also, this percussion that is like it's coming from the original song. Basically, the original song is quite similar, but it's like a, a different groove, as you can see here. I'll show you. As you can see here, there's like slightly different groove 
it works like this, the original. And I just used, I think, a bit of the last part, basically. And it just sounds always like this. It's just such a nice groove to dance to. It's pretty much it's about percussion. Uh, I also have these elements here called Arp, I, Arp, Low from the original. So, as you see, one is doing a bit more low thing. And another is like R I. It just like adds to the groove when all together. Yeah. So that's how the percussions all sound together. And uh, yeah, I think we got everything covered. Nothing. So I think I think I have covered already the mixing. As I said, mixing wise, I, I really think it's the most boring part of music production and I don't like to waste too much time uh, on it, but it's really important and it's important to learn at least the basics and don't make too much of it. Like don't, don't stress too much about it. Just try to keep it simple and learn as much as you can. And like, don't, don't rush things and don't put massive, uh, don't put like massive things like this on like messing around just because you saw it in the in the tutorial like you are saw, like you're seeing now just because other people do it don't doesn't mean that it's going to work for everyone in every project every track is different so uh make sure you you learn the basics like eq reverse timeless uh make sure you don't put too much stuff on your mix as well like for example uh sometimes drops with less lesser elements work much better than putting a lot of stuff. For example, in this one, I already had the strings, the, the synths here playing, also have the white noise and stuff, uh, bass, and uh, I didn't want, I didn't want to uh, put too much things right away. So I've just put all the rest here. Keep it simple. Don't put too much stuff on your project. Everything has its own space. And uh, yeah. Just remember to to have fun, and um, if it sounds good, it sounds good. Okay, uh, right. I think is, this is it. The track Rollo Green Raven PK Remix is out now. If you like the song and you want to support me, go get go get it on Beatport or stream it on Spotify. And uh, yeah, hope I've helped you. Hope you have learned something new from me. I know I'm not the most technical. Uh, guy around i'm sure you've you've watched much better tutorials than this but i just wanted to to tell you more about uh i think the most the most interesting parts for me is the structure the arrangements and um all this uh feeling of like you just need to have fun and go with it go with the flow yeah this is it thanks leo for uh for inviting me for this uh project walkthrough and um yeah see you around bye bye